Your brain cannot govern your body on its own. It is not an isolated control tower that knows how to make your body do certain things. That would imply that we all have a pre-programmed, predestined way of life that our brain already knows. Our brain operates off of signals from the periphery, from our organs, from our muscles, from our life, from our environment, and even from our gut. A simple way to explain it and paint a very big picture is by comparing it to social media. You see, we live in a digital age, so we know social media algorithms, right? The algorithms are designed to keep you scrolling as much as possible. They take in feedback from the posts that you look at. They take in feedback from the things you watch, from how you react to things, even your facial recognition with how you look at posts. And they tailor the best possible user experience to at least keep you glued to social media. Well, we know it in that sense, but our brain is doing the same thing. Our brain is constantly collecting signals and feedback from every area of our body. When we are in pain, when we are in pleasure, when we are stressed, when an organ is telling it something, when the lungs are telling it something, when XYZ cell is telling it something, but also significantly when our microbiome is telling it something. And the difference between our microbiome and other organs, yes, I consider the microbiome an organ, is because, let's take the liver for instance. The liver has a good amount of cells that can send signals to the brain. The microbiome has 50, 100, 200 times that amount of life form that can send a signal to the brain. So the microbiome can probably send a more powerful signal to the brain than anything else in our body. Let's explain how this works. And again, a simple way to paint a picture is to look at fecal transplants, because that just makes it simple and easy to see. Now, it's easy to fathom that a constipated person, if you were to take their microbiome and put it into a non-constipated person, the non-constipated person becomes constipated. That is pretty fascinating, but it's not out of the realm of logical you know, plausibility, because we tend to think about the microbiome with digestion. Well. That is the case, that does happen, but guess what? There was a study that was published in the Journal of Psychiatric Research that took the microbiome of depressed and anxious people and put it into germ-free mice. When they transferred that bacteria into those mice, those mice became depressed just off of receiving depressed microbiome. <laughs> Now that has to do with a tryptophan kynurenine pathway, which is a video for another day, it's much more complex, but that just paints a picture. So now let's talk blood-brain barrier for a second. Your brain is tightly regulated. It's encapsulated in what is called the blood-brain barrier. Okay, remember your brain receives signals from other governing bodies within your body, and then your brain from there makes an executive decision on how to react. Sound familiar? It's kind of like the White House, right? The White House is tightly protected, but it receives signals from all the governors, from all the senators, from all this and that, and it takes feedback and it ultimately makes a decision. Well, guess what? Our blood-brain barrier is made up of very specific proteins, occludin and cloudin-5, and normally they are very tightly wound together, and they are tightly packed together so that they protect bad things from getting into the brain. Well, there's a study that was published in the Journal of Science Translational Medicine that found that those that did not have a microbiome, like mice that were germ-free with no microbiome at all, ended up having very, very high permeability and loose junctions between these proteins. It reduced the creation, the expression of these proteins, so the blood-brain barrier was literally permeable and weak. But once they transplanted a healthy microbiome into the gut, suddenly the proteins got tight again and the blood-brain barrier was working and protective. Again, who would have thought the gut and the brain there? This is why diversity is so important, because we do not know the exact strains that might trigger this. But we do know that having a diverse microbiome is going to provide you with the best chance of this being able to happen. It's not about having a high amount of one specific bacteria, it's about having a diverse profile, which is largely why I go out on a limb and say fiber is probably pretty good for you. So when it comes down to your microbiome, diversity is best. You're probably wondering too if a probiotic is effective, and in the grand scheme of things, it can definitely be a big contributor to a healthier microbiome. I recommend Seed down below in the description if you wanna check them out. They are probably what I would consider the forefront leader in the world of probiotic research. 
I think they're doing a phenomenal job and it's why I partner with them on so many videos and why we work together because they actually put science first and really look into these things. So there's a link down below. You can save 15% off if you want to try seed. Okay, one of my personal favorite strains that they have is L. rhamnosus, which is one of the most widely researched lactobacillus strains that there is. And I'm gonna talk about that particular strain and some science in a minute. But anyhow, special link down below uh, just for nerd's sake. It's really cool. Take a look at their label, their ingredient label. Look at how many strains they have. Nice, diverse profile, but also check out the capsule inside of a capsule. Cool technology to make sure the probiotics are actually getting where they need to go. Anyhow, I digress. 15% off. Highly, highly recommend you make this part of your daily ritual. I'm serious. Okay, now I want to get into the whole gut-brain connection with the vagus nerve because this is so important, all right? 80% of our vagus nerve, okay, so our vagus nerve connects our brain to our gut, our gut to our brain. 80% of the nerve cells within that vagus nerve are afferent, which means 80% of the cells send a signal from the gut to the brain. 20% send a signal from the brain to the gut. You see, we tend to think, I get stressed out, I get a stomach ache. That must mean my brain is dictating what my gut does. No, that's only 20% of the equation. 80% of the equation is what your gut tells your brain. That's why the cells are skewed that way. Wild, right? The proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences published something super wicked cool. Okay, they found that adding L. rhamnosus, okay, specific strain of lactobacillus, to the diet or to the gut bacteria, ended up lowering the instances of stress and anxiety. But where does that tie in with the vagus nerve? Well, in individuals or, or mice that had the vagus nerve snipped, removed, they added the l rhamnosus and it had zero effect. It didn't change the brain. What does that imply? That implies that our gut microbiome communicates with the brain via that vagus nerve. And you could add all the good probiotics in the world, including l rhamnosus but if you didn't ha have that vagus nerve, it wouldn't make an effect. Pretty wild. Additionally, that vagus nerve also operates with short chain fatty acids. So remember the diversity thing I talked about? Well, every time you consume certain foods, fibers, even some proteins, there are components of those fibers and proteins that get broken down by, guess what, our gut bacteria and ultimately fermented into short chain fatty acids, the end result byproduct of breakdown of fibers and indigestible components. Those short chain fatty acids communicate also with the vagus nerve and with the brain directly. So we have a double whammy. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and imply anything that could be uh, misconstrued as curing, diagnosing, treating anything. But I would argue that a lot of how we feel in our brain has to do with our gut. I notice clear instances of when I feel good, when I don't feel good, and also with my diet. Another component that is very important to talk about is the microglia, which is what protects our brain on the inside. Okay, we have the blood-brain barrier that protects our brain from the outside, but then we have something called microglia, which protects us from pathogens if they do happen to get into the brain. With short-chain fatty acids have a huge effect on the microglia. In fact, if you delete the short-chain fatty acid receptors in specific models, you find that the microglia is significantly defective. Meaning without short-chain fatty acids from good healthy fibers and a good healthy diet, and yes, those vegetables that so many people seem to think are bad right now, you have a defective mechanism, protective immune mechanism within your brain. I rest my case. The microbiome, I can't say that it's one thing or another, but I can say that it is legitimately the future. And if we're not putting more science and research into the microbiome, then we are shooting ourselves in the foot because this is where we go next. Anyhow, keep it locked in here on my channel. Plenty more microbiome content here in 2021. And don't forget to check out that 15% off at Seed down below. See you tomorrow.